All right. To this university in Ohio now, ordered to pay $400,000 to a professor who was punished for refusing a student's demands to be referred to as a female. The professor is Nick Merriweather. He responded to a student's question at Shawnee State University with a, quote, yes, sir. Well, afterwards, Merriweather was told by the student that the preferred pronouns were she and her. Merriweather then said that would go against his Christian beliefs and sued the school, eventually saying it violated his First Amendment rights. Well, he won. The professor, Nick Merriweather, is now with us and his attorney, Tyson Langhofer. And gentlemen, good day to you. Nick, take us back to that day in class in 2018. What do you remember? Well, the, uh, you basically have it. Uh, you're exactly right. The student approached me after class and said that he wanted to be referred to as a female. And I tried to find an accommodation with the student. I was willing to use his uh, proper name, female proper name. And initially, the administration was willing to go along with that. But then the administration changed course and demanded that I defer to the ideology, that I refer to the student as a female. And I simply could not do that. I thought it was an egregious assault on my freedom of speech and my religious beliefs. And tell me why. Well, I believe that God created uh, men and women, male and female, but also the idea that my speech could be coerced, could be compelled by the administration, that this was... Uh, the, the college classroom is to be a place of debate and discussion and, and freewheeling ideas. The university has no, no place in telling professors how they are to think uh, to the, with the students. It was a coercion of my uh, freedom of speech. Yeah, Nick, I understand the university put further corrective action would be taken. They put that in your file. How come? Well, what, uh, basically what could have happened is that I would have been fired if, I had, if that incident had occurred again and if I again refused uh, to use preferred pronouns or non-biological pronouns, then I could have been fired. So that was why I filed the lawsuit. Yeah. It's my understanding that you, know, you won the case. School has to pay the, the, legal, um, the legal fees. And what happened over the last four years that amounted to the tune of $400,000. Um, yes, most yeah. of that is attorney's fees. Very yeah. little of it is for me. <laughs> which brings yes. in, yeah, which brings in your attorney. Tyson, why do you think he won this round? Well, because I think the First Amendment is very clear that the university, uh, public universities cannot compel professors to speak messages they disagree with. And this case was never about anything that Dr. Merriweather said or did. It was only about what the university was demanding he say. And, and he was punished simply for declining to express a message he doesn't believe. And that's antithetical to the First Amendment. And we think that the Supreme Court has, has said that time after time. And we're glad that the Sixth Circuit recognized that as well. Uh, Nick, what was the relationship like with this student going forward? From that point on, I thought we got along very well. The student ended up performing quite well in the class. The student's quite intelligent. Um, the, the issue was always with the administration. The, the administration had decided that we have to bow to this particular ideology. We had to speak in such a way that, that we recognize the ideology. That's what I couldn't do, but there was no problem with the student. Tyson, is the case done? It is done. And uh, we're hopeful that this sends a message to all universities and professors that, uh, you know, we shouldn't be compelling professors to say things they don't believe. Nick, thank you. Tyson, thanks to you. Shawnee State in Portsmouth, Ohio, a river town in south central Ohio on the north bank of the river. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on today. Thank, thank you. you for having us. OK, you bet.